thank you very much for um, the introduction and for everyone to uh, listen to my talk today. I am uh, grateful to the International Psoriasis Council for the opportunity to present my research on the interactions between skin inflammatory diseases and COVID-19. Inflammatory skin disease patients can be more susceptible to infections, potentially due to their defective skin barrier and or their systemic impact on their immune system. For example, atopic dermatitis patients have twice the risk of cutaneous and systemic infections. Furthermore, patients with severe psoriasis had higher risk of serious infections than mild psoriasis, suggesting a dose-response relationship, which is important for establishing causality in epidemiology. It is known that streptococcal throat infections, as well as periodontitis, can trigger or exacerbate psoriasis. Recently, it was shown that psoriasis patients are at increased risk of hospitalization from respiratory infections. And in particular, psoriasis patients are more susceptible to pneumonia, suggesting a link between psoriasis and respiratory tract infections. A key finding of uh, COVID-19 research is that SARS-CoV-2 binds to the ACE2 receptor, which is important for entry into lung epithelial cells. Interestingly, ACE2 is also present in skin, and we found it to be upregulated in psoriasis lesions. Uh, some researchers um, believe skin can also act as a point of infection for SARS-CoV-2. Uh, skin manifestations often occur at the same time as the systemic effects of COVID-19, and this figure illustrates a theory whereby disruption of a skin barrier from cutaneous diseases may allow SARS-CoV-2 to enter, uh, the upregulation of ACE2 can then facilitate its binding. The courts from around the world have suggested that psoriasis patients may be at greater risk from COVID-19, and COVID-19 has also been observed to exacerbate psoriasis in many cases. An epidemiological study in the UK found that psoriasis, SLE, and rheumatoid arthritis patients had increased risk of death from COVID-19 when grouped together. And it's also important to uh, note that the established COVID-19 risk factors, such as type 2 diabetes or cardiovascular disease, are enriched among skin disease patients. To investigate the relationship between COVID-19 and inflammatory skin diseases, we conducted a study involving over 400,000 patients that had a recent encounter in Michigan medicine. Around 1,000 of these patients were indicated as having COVID-19 by a laboratory test or diagnosis code. As a surrogate for COVID-19 severity, we noted that 150 patients were recorded as requiring mechanical ventilation. Controlling for age, sex, BMI, and socioeconomic status, this table illustrates some of the conditions we found to be significantly at risk from COVID-19. Notably, along with established risk factors such as chronic kidney disease and type 2 diabetes, having a skin condition increases susceptibility to COVID-19 infection. Uh, most of the established risk factors also increase the risk of requiring mechanical ventilation. However, by contrast, having a skin condition reduced the risk and the effect size was stronger than for all the other risk factors. We also investigated tonsillitis and pharyngitis, which are caused by uh, streptococcal infections and found having a history of these conditions to have a similar effect, i.e. they increase the risk of COVID-19 but decrease the risk of requiring mechanical ventilation. Research suggests the severity of COVID-19 can be lower in cases where there is strong and rapid interference response. This could happen if SARS-CoV-2 enters through the skin, 
since it may provide more time for the immune system to react before the virus reaches the lungs. Alternatively, since it is known that inflammatory skin diseases such as psoriasis impact the uninvolved skin, it is plausible this would also occur in the respiratory epithelium. This could weaken the epithelial barrier while at the same time preparing the immune system to respond to infection. To investigate further, we performed genomic analysis on 11 gene expression data sets from mild skin diseases and two SARS-CoV-2 infected cell lines, normal human bronchial epithelial cells and human bronchial organoids. Uh, this heat map shows the pairwise enrichment of shared of regulated genes with a number of shared genes in cyan and the colors representing the strength of enrichment from purple up to yellow. Using this approach, we found rosacea, discoid lupus, acne, atopic dermatitis, and psoriasis to have higher enrichment of shared genes with COVID-19 compared to other skin conditions such as burn injury or uh, non-neoplastic levi, illustrating the role of inflammation. Looking more specifically at these conditions, many of the upregulated genes they share with SARS-CoV-2 infected bronchial epithelial cells are involved in immune response, including IL-1B, IL-6, uh, TNF, and IL-17C. Covered genes shared by all five skin conditions. The most enriched pathways include IL-17 and uh, TNF signaling. This bar plot presents a number of upregulated genes shared between psoriasis and SARS-CoV-2 infected bronchial organoids in each chromosome. A high proportion of the genes are located in chromosome 1. And of uh, the chromosome 1 genes, around one-third are inside the epidermal differentiation complex, or EDC. The EDC is involved in keratinocyte differentiation and cornification, as well as the molecular physiology of psoriasis and other skin diseases. S100 acts as kappa B pathway, while SPRR genes are associated with the remodeling of skin, lung, and intestine epithelia. The LC3 genes have been found to have antibacterial um, antimicrobial activity. Although not significantly expressed in COVID-19 infected ocular epithelia, LC3D has six times mean, higher mean expression in cases and controls. LC3D is specifically expressed in skin and esophagus, which suggests a connection to epithelial cells. LC3D is also expressed in tonsils, highlighting the connection with streptococcal infection and tonsillitis in psoriasis patients. Well, since the EDC is an established locus for psoriasis susceptibility, we decided to investigate the potential for shared genetic signals using trans disease meta-analysis, or TDMA. Meta-analysis is a popular g tool for combining studies of the same disease to increase statistical power. However, in TDMA, we use meta-analysis to combine GWAS of different diseases and compare their genetics. We adopt an equally weighted approach for TDMA to avoid biasing towards either condition. Now, these regional association plots for the EDC in psoriasis and COVID-19 GWAS show the minus log 10 p-value on the y-axis and the genomic position on the x-axis. The marker of interest is highlighted in purple, and the other markers are color-coded to indicate the linkage disequilibrium. Here we see a signal that is suggestive significant in psoriasis and COVID-19. And when uh, we apply the transit meta-analysis, the signal becomes genome-wide significant 
suggesting a potential shared locus in the EDC. However, the number of available COVID-19 GWAS samples has dramatically increased over the last year since we conducted our study. In particular, the latest version of a GWAS has almost 100-fold more cases compared to a version available previously, sadly reflecting the scale of the ongoing pandemic. We were unable to replicate the signal we originally found in the latest COVID-19 GWAS. However, a new signal was revealed in chromosome 19 nearby the foot 2 gene that is suggestive significant in psoriasis and COVID-19. When we apply a plant disease meta-analysis, the signal becomes genome-wide significant, again suggesting a potential shared locus. In conclusion, we demonstrated through epidemiological analysis that skin patients, uh, skin disease patients have higher rate of COVID-19 than the general population. More recently, this was confirmed in an independent study for psoriasis, which I understand from the authors uh, will be published soon. Comparative genomic analysis suggests the involvement of shared immunological pathways such as the IL-17 signaling, as well as genes in the epidermal differentiation complex, which parallels existing understanding of the relationship between psoriasis and streptococcal throat infections. We also illustrated some evidence from genetics, although this has changed the later versions of the COVID-19 GWAS and may be affected by the complicated relationship between skin diseases and COVID-19 i.e. increased risk but decreased severity. We're grateful to the research participants in our study as well as our collaborators for their input. The work is supported by NIAMS, the National Survivors Foundation, the Dermatology Foundation, the University of Michigan's Physician Health Initiative and the Babcock Endowment Fund. I am particularly grateful to the Dermatology Foundation for a research career to award. And if you have any questions after the talk, uh, please feel free to contact me by my email address. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. I think we have time for um, some questions. Um, yeah, please, if you have any questions, put, please put them in the, uh, the Q&A box on the right. Uh, I might have one uh, a little bit provocative. Uh, uh, the, uh, given what has been uh, discussed before uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the sort of bimodal, biphasic uh, course of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection, meaning that uh, Basically, the e early immune response is, uh, which is key in the limitation of the uh, the risk of severe COVID-19, uh, would be a strong, robust uh, type one interferon response. And we know that uh, there are some 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 uh, uh, loss of function variants, uh, polymorphism, which are associated with a protective effect against psoriasis. So, instinctively, apparently, you you didn't unveil that, uh, but uh, could it be that on the larger scale, uh, might find uh, some some uh, variants? That's I know that's speculation, but um, that that would favor uh, uh, basically the uh, uh, protection against the disease. Let's say some gain of function variant of uh, uh, type one interferon associated genes, and uh, on the other hand, some uh, uh, gene variants as favoring the uh, uh, cytokine storm uh orientating the uh the the the, the immune response towards a, a strong nf kappa b driven uh response that 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 might be associated and i say i might it, it might uh but th they have been uh unveiled in the setting of uh, a multigenic complex disease such as psoriasis so uh, to summarizing all, all I, what has been said my question for you is uh do, do would you uh then uh uh, expand 
the uh, the the target population uh, in uh, with the, keeping in mind that there might be a, a mosaic of uh, patients with very different genetic and also immunological background because uh, if, if correct me if I'm wrong and that's uh, a question for all you guys uh, speakers um, uh, apparently well. The immunological, uh, the autoimmune response to uh, type 1 interferon might be driven by genetic factors. Uh, that's uh, basically another story. But but uh, with uh, all what th that you have been communicating, uh, I wonder if we, sh we shouldn't uh, expand uh, these uh, these studies to a much larger population. Um, I don't, and that's a question for you as well, uh, Matthew and uh, Johan. Uh, that's uh, you know, many questions. In <laughs> yeah, Matthew. So th thank you very much for a uh, uh, helpful comment. I definitely uh, I agree, Fad. Um, uh, as uh, um, larger sample sizes become available, we should hopefully be able to understand in more detail about the role of uh, genetics, and um, this is why, um, since conducting my study, I also went back to the the latest version of uh, uh, COVID nineteen uh, host genetics in initiative uh, cohort, and I say was increased a hundredfold in terms of uh, the number of uh, cases for COVID nineteen. So, uh, I think the genetic information has. Um, it, it, it's complicated and it changed since uh, our study was conducted uh, a year ago. So I, I think we should monitor those um, genetic data uh, as it arrives. And also, it will be interesting to apply to other inflammatory skin diseases, for example, uh, atopic dermatitis as, as well as psoriasis. Great. Yeah, I think, I think that kind of brings us, we're right on the time mark. So uh, I'm going to wrap up. So I would like to thank the speakers for their excellent and, and very exciting talks. I think it's been a very insightful session that we've had this morning. Um, I would like to thank my co-moderator, uh, Dr. Hervey Basilis, for being here today and, and, and helping me and helping, you know, and, and running this, this session. Uh, I'd also like to thank the IPC and particularly Nicora Gardner that helped us to kind of put all of this together and also the ESDR and the ESDR staff. And last but not least, uh, thank you all in the audience for attending this session with us in the last 90 minutes or so. So I uh, hope you have a great meeting and, and thanks again for attending. Thank you.